Okay, and we are back. I am Peter Egan of PeterEgan.net. That is P E T E R E G A N dot net. Four letters in Egan. PeterEgan.net. Thank you for watching this far. Um, one of the things I'd like to explain about what we're doing with the uh, the perforated dog food and with the chum bucket. These are not intended to be minute ready solutions. Like drop them in the water and boom, all of a sudden you're gonna start catching tons and tons of fish. But if you do live on the water or you have consistent access to a semi remote fishing area, I mean, it doesn't have to be completely private. Boats pass by here all the time. Um, I occasionally, you know, have to, um, well, we'll say politely, ask um, fishermen to leave. Uh, never bass fishermen. I, I will actually do my best to help them as far as telling them what I know about where people catch fish in this bayou. But um, th there have been a couple of folks who have, you know, figured out that I was successfully chumming the water and would, like, literally come camp out in my backyard for two, three weeks in a row. And, you know, I, I have to leave my house, I have to go to work, you know, I, I wasn't comfortable with that. So, um, I, I politely asked them to leave, and thankfully they haven't returned. But this is an issue you may have to deal with, so if there is a way to conceal your activity that would be preferred over a surface bucket like mine is that every boat passing by can see clear as day so anyway I'm talking kind of aloud right now because the wind is blowing and as soon as I get back over there towards the um, fishing area um, it may be a little difficult to hear so I wanted to get all that out of the way first so that we don't spook any fish. So when I walk back over there, I am going to throw a line in the water and see what happens. Granted, it's only been about 10 minutes. There's probably very to little, maybe even no effect yet from the chum. Um, maybe there is. We'll find out just how fast it works. One thing I can tell you though, is that when we come out here to film tomorrow and the next day and the day after that we'll be catching fish every single cast so let's start making our way back there and as we do you'll hear my voice lowering what I've got here I had a cork with it I'm not sure where it went uh, so I guess we're just going to have to go corkless. Ugh. Lovely. Bear with me. Okay, the phone charger came out, so I had to stop to put that back in. So what I'm going to attempt to do is put a little bit of this meat on this, this fish um, that I caught yesterday offshore. Uh -oh. Let's see what happens.
Here we go. And you can see we're just kind of out there. No weight. Uh, no cork, which is not usually how I would fish this. Usually I would be fishing with a um, one of those little pinch-on weights, uh, about a sixteenth of an ounce, mm -hmm. about nine inches under an eighteen-foot rounded bobber. However, the wind must have blown the bobber away, so this is what we've got. Let's see if we can come up with anything. I've also never fished with, um, what's this, Jack Creval before? So I don't even know if catfish like it. We'll find out if we haven't gotten a bite in another minute. I will uh, switch to chicken liver and we'll see how that does. And that'll give us a better indication of where we are as the chum is progressing. So, With that, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and I will resume as soon as we have something more interesting to watch. A few considerations for those of you who who do live on or near water and plan to chum regularly, uh, it makes a big difference when you chum. Um, this bayou is attached to the Chifuncta River in Covington, which drains into Lake Pontchartrain, which drains into Lake Bourne, which drains into the Gulf of Mexico. So you've got freshwater ecosystems connected with saltwater ecosystems, and when you get south winds, you get salt water up in the rivers here, up more, well, I mean, it's still South Louisiana, but it's the northern part of South Louisiana. And when you've got north winds, you've got muddy water. We've got something on the line. You've got muddy water uh, in the inshore and offshore fishing areas. And Here we go. Well, just like that, our first fish of the day. This looks to be a channel catfish. Very important how you grab them because the, those spines they have are very sharp. I'm gonna make sure you got a good grip on him. I'm gonna have to set the phone down to de-hook. Okay, well, we've got the fish off the hook and back in the water. Um, I, I didn't intend to keep him. I used a very small hook. In fact, I'll show you uh, the side of the hook. You can even see it. It's tiny. And, and the reason for that is that it, I didn't want to do much damage to the fish knowing I was going to let it go. Want it to be able to make a full recovery and you know obviously not die from any injury sustained during our little run rendezvous right there but the point is 
you just witnessed me catch a catfish within about 90 seconds of completing my chum operation. Now imagine what this is going to be like in a week or in three days. Hold that thought, let me rinse the catfish on, off my hand, I will be right back. And we're back, Peter Egan of PeterEgan.net. Um, you just saw me catch our first catfish and last catfish of the night because I'm not going to throw another line into the water tonight. Um, well, at least not one with a hook on it. But this is where I'm going to kind of need y'all to, um, you know, to keep what I'm about to say on the down low because I really don't want the neighbors finding out about this. All right. You see that gigantic fish head right there? I'm gonna attach that to some twine and attach that to a limb line j just to find out if there are any alligators in the water. I honestly don't know if there are or if there aren't, but I would like to know because I have three dogs. Two of them like to swim and if there are alligators in the water, I'd certainly like to know that so that I will know not to let my dog swim in the river itself. So, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and proceed with that. You're not going to have to watch me do all that. Um, all I've pretty much else got to do is clean up the, um, the scene here, hose off the deck, and, you know, wait 24 hours, and I will have two to four or five hundred catfish ranging from between about one and fifty sixty pounds by this time tomorrow that's how you jump for catfish um like i said i am always much more of a fan of the long-term approach over the short-term approach give it at least 24 hours preferably enough time for the water to come through and the water level to drop. If you're in a bayou like I am that's connected to the main river, when the river rises, water comes into the bayou and fish come in from the river into the bayou if they have reason to. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but right across, let's see if I can shoot. Okay. There is a, um, there's a trash can lined up against the other shore right there. You should be able to see it from where I'm holding the phone. Without being able to see what you're seeing, I can't tell for sure, but take my word that it's there and that it's about halfway full with water right now. Um, about 24 hours ago, that garbage can was almost completely covered with water. And my guess is that after tonight, the garbage can will be almost completely empty of water. What I want to happen is for the scent from the dog food in the chum bucket to go out with the water, leaving the bayou and going into the main river as the river heads south into the lake. That brings the scent from my bayou into the main body of water and every fish that passes by that scent then when the water rises again will come right back in with it and that's when i'll have my school of catfish and i, I mean I, I could literally um supply a fish house like the the restaurant in bush louisiana that has 500 people eating at it every night and supply it with only catfish I catch myself using this method. Um, obviously, I'm hoping not too many people from my local area in the same river as I am begin using these methods, but from the rest of you around the world, I think this is a great way to, to get a leg up on the competition, to get some fish, and um, you know, make sure that your fishing trips are successful. Uh, it's to me, just as much fun to reel in 50 pound edible, good eating fish from my back porch than it is to drive two hours 
um, in, you know, chilly air at five in the morning with mist being sprayed up in my face, making my clothes wet, you know, cold, uncomfortable ride there, cold, uncomfortable ride back, spending a day in the hot sun. I mean, it has its perks, don't get me wrong. I have a lot of fun doing it. But if I can get just as good or better results right at home in the luxury of my own home, I mean, I could play music out here, I could barbecue, I could watch TV, I can do whatever I want. This is my house. Um, but, but then, yeah, that's the natural, obvious choice. So, what you've just seen me do is convert a regular house, like there are thousands along this river, into the one that has all the fish in front of it. And that's how I did it. Um, these videos are completely free. I, uh, I will kindly ask that if you try any of these techniques and you have success um, all of the supplies that you will need to orchestrate this scheme will be available at peteregan.net at the lowest prices you will be able to find anywhere my uh, my only request in exchange for sharing this knowledge with you is that you buy through my website it's not like I'm making a whole ton of money off of it I make a very very small commission it's uh, it's enough to you know man to, to pay the website hosting costs and the time it takes to write out the blog post and that's about it it's not a lot of money but it helps and every little bit helps and um, if you do decide to do this go this route and you start using this equipment to try this technique and mechanism of chumming please buy it through my website um, and if you don't you know that's your choice and you're certainly welcome to do that so anyway it's been my pleasure sharing my fishing knowledge with you this evening uh, may you have the best of luck in your fishing endeavors uh, today and all days moving forward have a good night. My name is Peter Egan, signing out of PeterEgan.net. Peter, E-G-A-N, dot net. Thank you. Have a great evening.